ಆಡ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೋತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ
good afternoon to everyone uh, uh, miss uh, uh, ramisha rani associate uh, team leader uh, ahl uh, now uh, she is going, going to handle the session artificial intelligence and neural networks with the machine learning so i will hand over the session to uh, ramisha rani ma'am ma'am are you there yeah yes sir is it audible ah yeah, yes ma'am audible you can okay. continue okay okay sir thank you sir thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so good afternoon everyone so today we are going to discuss the topic artificial neural network so i am going to discuss what are what are the various parameter you need for artificial to build artificial neural network so followed by artificial neural network if time permits we'll start convolutional neural network okay so so first we have to understand what is artificial neural network artificial intelligence right so artificial intelligence if you want to understand artificial intelligence first we have to understand what is the natural intelligence right if it is when we are talking about the natural intelligence the exact example is a human right so how we think how we act how we finish on task in a same way we are going to create some artificial thing so why we have to study the artificial neural network then what is the natural neural network so the natural neural network is exactly our brain so with the help of brain only we think and we make decision we have that uh, sixth sense right so how we are going to exactly build the artificial neural network exactly that neural network is going to finish one task like how we finish okay to build some artificial neural network you should understand what is input layer weight hidden layer activation function and loss function right so first we will understand how brain neural network works then we will go to how artificial neural network works okay so uh, our brain is fully filled with the billions of neurons right so what is the purpose of neuron so neuron carries a bit of information about our past not not only about the past our critical thinking in all the cases the neuron is going to store the memory of our life right so uh, now consider scenario now exactly i am started asking one question to to you like what is your aim right so when i asking you one question what is your aim so suddenly your brain start thinking what is your uh, answer for that question what is your aim so inside so input is my question understand clearly input is my question your brain start thinking whether this neuron has the information for this question whether this neuron has information for this question so within a span of time within a minute of time if you already have some you are biased with your aim suddenly you can answer your aim right so suddenly your brain will have always thinking about your aim and suddenly it fits the information from your brain and you answer to me okay my aim is like to become a something right so the thing is so th so the thing is how this neural network carries the information right so this is all about uh, how the uh, in a quick way i have told you a uh, brain neural network works right so exactly we are going to have number of neurons and we are going to store the information for a particular task and one more thing don't consider that in artificial intelligence we are exactly going to build like how our brain works like our brain is like dynamic it works in any situation right but when it comes to artificial intelligence like okay we can use we can create one neural network to finish only one particular task right for example to classify the dog or cat that is a one simple task right so um humanoid like a sofia like robot i hope you have all, already have heard about uh, the sofia robot the humanoid robot so for such kind of system they used to build 
how exactly our brain works. So always we don't want to bias to build like the exactly how human brain works. So instead, we can take on problem statement and we can give some solution with the help of this artificial neural network. Right? So to understand how artificial neural network works, first we have to understand how computer understands the image. So to understand the artificial neural network, starting with the image processing is the best case. Instead of start, starting with the numerical data, like a house, house price prediction like that. Instead of that, we'll start understand with the image. Okay. So to understand ANN, I told we have to understand how computer understands the image. So we have three set of different types of image. One is a black and white image, one is a grayscale image, and another one is a color image, right? So if it is a black and white image, it's going to have zero and one. And understand one thing, computer knows only numbers, zeros and one. So how, how we are visually seeing an image, how this image is exactly going to convert it into one numbers. So if you know the trick, then easily you can understand the working principle of AN, right? So consider this is an image, right? I told black and white image, only the two colors is going to involve in that particular area, in that particular image. For black, we are going to give zero. For white, we are going to give one. So the next step, the next step is we are going to convert this image into a matrix format. Clear image into a matrix format. That's why we used to do represent image in a resolution format, like uh, 224 cross 224. What it exactly means? It exactly means how many rows and how many columns to represent the particular image, right? So this is a black and white image and converted into the matrix form. Now we have each cell. To represent the each cell. Okay, for cell one, we are going to for the cell. You can consider. Wait, let me take the thing. Pencil, pen, pen,
So let me reconnect once. Still got hand. When camera came, no, I thought I didn't get camera. Uh, camera no, today, how it is working? Now you are assistant professor with your associate. Associate is such a big thing when you will get PhD. Then only you can but, become uh, associate. Sometimes professor. it is a matter of experience also. No, no. Right. Not experience. You have no, to qualify no. post uh, ME or MCA. Uh, then only you can become assistant professor. You did not. No. Which one? Master degree. Uh, you did, right? Uh, and then you have experience master degree, then you can uh, become associate. Uh, no, no, no. After PhD. Somebody said that. Uh, Who said? Don't believe anybody. You know his qualification? B. B. Uh, then B they are they are writing actually this assistant professor based on nothing um, nobody for this college only he is professor if you go to other colleges they will not give because he is not having post graduation he is only I don't know why he is wasting his talent. He two times he wrote ME exam. He qualified that PGCT exam two times. He enrolled two times. He last time he wrote only one lab exam. That's all. He didn't write exam also. Should write and finish, no? No, oh, very good. Uh... It's not doing. I don't know. And um, he is having his own problem. Two years before only he got married. This is third anniversary, I think. I have a request. Professor A. Devi to propose the vote of thanks. What is this? But he's aged, no? He's aged? He is must be seen by him. We must be filled by heart. Thank you, one subscriber, for watching. I come to this with a great privilege of thanks to all the dignitaries who have returned this as a remarkable and memorable event. Today, my words are not. Sir, please make me as co host. My name is Amisha Rani. Ke. Ma'am, now you are a co host, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. So now what we are going to do is we are simply going to fill the columns, each rows of each cell value. This cell value is one and this cell value is zero. So wherever that cell, particular cell contains white color, we are going to place it with one. Wherever we are facing the black color in that particular cell, we are going to put zero, right? So the final output will be like this. 
So here you can see now we have converted the image into a number form, right? Into zeros and ones because this contains only the two colors. So this is all about the black and white image. So the next part is grayscale image. So when we are talking about the grayscale image, here the color variant is nearly 256. But in black and white image, um, black and white image, we have only two, but in this grayscale, we have 256. From starts from the lightest color to the darkest color. So all the combinations will be in the gray grayscale, right? So again, the same set of for grayscale image, right? So this is a grayscale image. It involves more than two color. Instead of black color, we, we, we can able to see the several grayscale colors. So again, we have to convert this into a matrix form, right? And we are going to fill, fill with the respective color value, right? So here you can see for this particular cell, the color value is 167. For darkest color like black, that is eight. Right? So finally, it converted into a whole number. So now this particular matrix is ready to for a calculation, ready for the calculation, right? So now the third set of type is the color image. So when we talk about color image, we have red color, blue color, green color, primary colors. So red color alone have 256 color variants from the lightest to red. Here you can see from the lightest to red to the darkest to red. Clear? Same like for blue. From lightest to blue to darkest to blue, same for green. Lightest to green to darkest to green variant. So nearly for color image, for red, green, and blue, we have, for each, we have 256 color variant. So this is the first thing you have to know. So color image works a little bit different from the grayscale image and black and white image. So to have the colorful image, we it should have the three color space. One is the green, red domain, green domain, and blue domain, right? So this one particular color image, this one particular color image, okay, have three colors. Green color, sorry, red color, green color, and blue color. So again, this is going to be in matrix form. We have to convert everything into a matrix form. So what is the purpose of splitting these colors into three channels? What is the need actually? So let's see. So but always if you take any color image, it is going to be combination of three, three channels. Okay, red channel, green channel and blue channel. Clear? So now I will tell you what is the purpose of the color image. So already we have only three primary colors, red color, green color, blue color. What if you want this color? Because in natural, in natural, if you take any photos, we cannot able to, we can, we can able to see more than primary colors, right? So if you want to exactly code into a system, so the computer should know exact value for the color. Right? So if you want such kind of light colored green, light colored green, then you should mix the ratio of red color 152, 253 for green color and 138 for blue color. If you mix all these primary colors in this ratio, you can get this green color. Clear? So in this way, we can nearly able to get the many possible color combinations, right? So here you can see the various color. So exactly now you can see this color. This is a color image, the combination of blue, green, red, okay? If I want to have this particular cell color, then it, it acts with the blue color value, green color value, and red color of all three channels it's going to produce this yellow color color so exactly it matches with the map with the exact cell value what if if you want this sandal color then it maps with here and start giving you the exact color 
right so each green color uh, red color and green color will have the respective matrix for that colorful image clear so why we have to know about the color image because the deep learning works with the color image so if you already uh, familiar with image processing like in open cv so open cv always work with the grayscale image but the deep learning the artificial neural network works with the color image so how the images are read by the computer so that we can easily understand the working principle of AML. right so up to this this is a basic you should know so now we are stepping into the artificial neural network the first one which is, which is nothing but a single perceptron so what is the purpose of single perceptron so consider a scenario i told if i ask one question so this is going to be our input layer right this is a hidden layer which means our our brain so we don't know what kind of process is happening inside our brain okay but finally we can able to get the output as a voice so i told there is a number of neurons it checks with all the neurons and when it gets the perfect answer for the question it start retrieving the answer to the who asked the question right so likewise when there is a billions of neuron when your question interact with one neuron and validating that one neuron the particular neuron is having the validated answer for this question or not so when input interacting with one neuron and validating that particular neuron is called the single perceptron clear so easily you can map it with the real time work so how our brain works so easily you can able to imagine how we can easily put it into a artificial neural network so we need inputs okay we need input input is nothing but the question right and the respective weights the net function activation function this activation function is exactly going to validate whether this particular neuron is having the valid information or not whether the combination of these weights is going to give me the particular answer for this question or not so finally it gives you the output so the single process is called the single process so why we have to first understand what a single perceptron then it goes to the multiple perceptron so once you understand the process of how single perceptron works it is applicable to for multiple perceptron even if you work with your okay so now we understood what are the basic necessary steps to understand the am so a with the feed forward network and backward propagation there are two important process will be carried out in the artificial neural network so we'll frame one problem statement so based on the problem statement we'll start creating one artificial neural network right so we need uh, to classify the image the given image is a tree or not so to obviously to learn the process okay to learn the process we need okay we need the tree image so this is a color image so what i'm going to do if it is a color image how many cells we have how many channels we have nearly three channels right red channel green channel and blue channel okay so uh, he for simplicity sake i have taken only three into two cross matrix clear into three channels 
nearly we are going to have 18 cells so now clearly understand this each cell is going to act as a neuron clear this each cell is going to act as a neuron this each cell have one bit of information so if you take this cell it has bit of information like 0 0.3 if you take this cell it has some bit of information 0 0.4 clear because our working principle our brain working principle if i ask some question okay automatically the brain start thinking about it and give the relatable answer to the question right so each neuron will have some information likewise we need some information to process official word right so our problem statement is to classify the tree or not so for that the artificial neural network should know how tree looks like what are the features of tree right so now you understood that each cell is going to act as a neuron so for simplicity sake i'm going to take only one channel like uh, six values okay it is uh, for all the 18 it works for all the 18 neurons here yeah. so just i have taken for the six neurons like 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 and 0 0.1 now i already told you for machine learning for ai world the understanding of the visualization of weight is the most important thing once you understand the real the in, in real concept of weight okay real concept of weight, the purpose of weight, then you can easily understand the whole core of artificial intelligence. Because we are going to deal with the weight a lot in each algorithm. Weight plays the main role. Because the weight, so uh, tell me, so understand this question, okay? We have machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing, then data science right so if you want to describe this domain in one line so how could you uh, describe it so if you ask me this question to me i can tell machine learning deep learning and natural language processing is for prediction it may be for future prediction or it may be for cross checking with the past prediction okay but the data science, in our case, in our real world, all the problem statement does not depend upon the prediction. Some of the problem statement have some normal calculations. What happened so far? What we can do with the data set? For such type of questions can be answered with the data science like descriptive analysis, inferential analysis, like that, right? So when we talk about machine learning, deep learning, and NLP is for prediction. Okay, for prediction. So it's all about how, how it's going to predict. How, because the astrologer will do the future prediction, right? So how exactly this max calculation do, it's going to do the future prediction. So that simple trick is all about the weight. This weight is going to tell us about the future. So like uh, if you take the simple linear regression, if your data set spreads in this linear way, now we know the pattern. This data set exhibits the linear pattern. So without any hesitation, we can use the linear regression formula because we understood this pattern is growing towards the side. So again, if we draw one prediction line towards the side, then automatically, if you find, okay, if you find in what ratio this data set is getting increased, then obviously for this future prediction, the obviously it is going to meet these areas. So weight is nothing but in what ratio that particular data set is getting increased or decreased. So once you understand for the simple example, the intuition for weight is same for all the algorithms but calculation may get differ. 
the procedure may get deformed, but the weight concept is the ratio of finding of that particular column of that particular data set how the pattern is getting increased or decreased right so why this weight is much needed in deep learning so in addition to this i will tell you what is the difference between the machine learning and deep learning any idea so for machine learning there is no brain activity there is no brain activity so based on the data set and based on some calculations it start calculating thing weight and bias and put it in the formula and change check getting parameter and finally it gives the answer but when it comes to deep learning under deep learning only you can say ann artificial neural network clear then cnn rnn everything falls under deep learning so all these networks okay works how there is a brain activity that's why they named this as a deep learning how our brain deeply understand the task right so for deep learning also we are dealing with the weight okay so what we are going to do is we are going to give some random initialization random initialization for the weight so this particular neuron we have to find weight the behavior of the particular neuron we have to find the correct weight of this neuron we have to find the correct way correct weight for this neuron too clear so to find the correct weight what we are going to do in rnn we are going to initialize the weight randomly right so here you can see randomly initialized to wait for this particular neuron is 0.5 for 0.4 is 0.1 minus 0.4 0.3 minus 0.2 and minus 0.3 so what is our next process i hope already you are you are all aware about uh, the linear algebra the straight line equation y is equal to y is equal to mx plus c so for feed forward network okay we are going to use this particular formula for back propagation we are going to use the chain rule clear so okay this is neuron and this is weight right this is weight and we multiplied uh, the neuron and weight and we got the final answer for the particular neuron is 0.15 0.04 0. Uh, minus 0.08 like that then what is this button what is this exactly any idea so this is nothing but the hidden layer okay this is the input layer and this is the hidden layer so what is the purpose of hidden layer how you can map this with the, the real time brain work so again we'll map it with the real time so if we input if i ask any question and this brain some operation will happen in brain some calculation and finally it drives some output from our brain and it answers so we don't know what kind of process is happening inside our brain that is hidden right so this brain operation is called a hidden layer so inside this hidden layer there are many neurons so this is the neuron inside the hidden layer right so we have to validate so these are the input neurons understand these are the input neurons right and this is the hidden layer neuron hidden layer neuron so you have to understand how this hidden layer neuron works 
clear so the next process is finally showing it which means we are going to do the summation of all these answers right then we have to put this into a activation function so there is a in this place you should have the clear understanding of how it works inside this hidden layer of each neuron right so i told that is going to be the summation so after summation we had the answer 0.08 so this is nothing but the net function right so after output of this net function is given to the activation function so i already told this activation function is going to validate whether this particular hidden neuron because this this weight okay this weight is fully depends upon the what weight randomly initialized it's fully depend upon this if you change this value obviously there is a change in the final value puts are going to be constant so fully it depends upon the weight right so what we are going to do is we are going to validate whether the randomly initialized weight is correct or not whether it's going to work for the situation or not so how we can do we have many activation functions nowadays the most popular one is a rectified linear unit relu nothing but the maximum comma 0 comma x so maximum maximum comma 0 comma 0.8 so what we are going to do we are going to compare it with 0 comparing to 0 which one is the maximum value so comparing with these two values 0.08 is going to be the maximum value so it's going to take 0.08 as a valid point so consider a scenario so now consider a scenario now we got the answer as minus uh, 2.5 clear minus 2.5 so what we can do is maximum 0. Point comma minus 2.5 now tell me compared to this two values which one is the highest value obviously 0 so at the time we are going to put 0 for this particular neuron because it doesn't have valuable information so i'm going to make this as a zero so this one entire process is called the single process process clear so if you understand the exact process of the single process prom this is going to be same even if you increase your number of hidden layer neurons so let me show you so these are the activation function that you can use with clear identity binary step logistic tan h or rectified soft plus and many more and this is also playable parameter that you can play for your research work clear so this is the hidden layer neuron 1 so this is going to be the second second neuron inside the hidden layer of first hidden layer we are going to deal with the second neuron again same process for this neuron the weight will be randomly initialized and it do net function and it pass through activation function and the activation function validates whether this particular value is having the proper information or not clear again this process repeats for output layer again we can able to include uh, many layers hidden layers based on our problem statement so i i can tell you why we have to randomly initialize the weight 
what is the how it exactly matches with the brain activity now consider a scenario you are going to learn a new topic for example consider this artificial intelligence is a new topic to this world okay so only very very minimal number of person knows how it works right so when you are start when you are going to learn this artificial neural network when you hear it for first time you will have some random idea about it right you will have definitely you will have some random idea about it okay you are taking the particular topic and you start exploring each concept how it works at the time slowly your random idea will be changed to the real truth exactly what is ai exactly how artificial neural network works so like same kind of scenario we have implemented here so here i am justifying why we have to give that random initialization weight so this brain activity starts with the random idea it works with the final output and it's go through with the back and it alters the weight and it stick with the correct weight correct understanding of the future clear so the back propagation so finally when it comes to the output layer if there is any difference between the actual value and predicted value again okay it it, it propagates back through the using the chain rule okay so again it alters for example consider the difference between the actual weight minus predicted weight is uh, 30 percentage okay like 3 so in difference it what it do is okay what it do is it exactly changes the weight for 30 so that when it alters to get the value of uh, altering the weight for 30 to get compensate 100 which means for this randomly initialized we got 70 but we have to get 100 percentage so it alters the weight to get the 100 each right through this by because here also we have generated the weight here also we have generated weight in all everything we have generated weight everyone is interrelated so exactly how our neuron networks our brain neuron networks interrelated with each one in exact way okay in exact way this artificial neural network will also work clear so to understand this back uh, back propagation and how it finds root weight because finally if you take one topic and you are start learning that particular topic finally you have to end up with the correct understanding right you need some validating test you have to pass some examination that you are well versed in this particular topic so likewise we have to take the correct way we have to stop our learning process when our system correctly learned the correct way so to do that we have two concept one is gradient descent another one is the learning rate clear so first uh, these two concept are uh, interrelated first i will tell you what is gradient descent okay so here we have taken a parabola why we have to take parabola for this because the parabola have a property of okay increasing decreasing again increase because our brain activity works exactly like this so when you when you are in a training okay when you are in a training you perform good when someone monitors you you perform good right so when someone doesn't monitor you slowly or activity learning activity will activity will become very low so you will reach bad again when someone starts taking care of your learning property so again your learning performance will get improved 
so our brain fully depends upon ups and downs so exactly we have to take such kind of scenario that's why the para we have taken a parabola right but here we have to concentrate this parabola is for error so when you have minimum error at the time your moral performance will be good so we can reach the minimum error at this point the lowest peak okay lowest peak of this parabola even if you cross this error you will get the increasing higher error. right so exactly you have to stop our training process here so how we are going to achieve this minimum error that is a point you have to understand here so this is the initial weight when randomly initialized weight at the time we are finally we are having 30 percentage difference right from actual to predicted we are facing over here so when it comes by back propagation by altering the weights and now the weight is here the error is somewhat reduced from uh, previous one and it comes here and slowly comes here and finally reaches here so you have to monitor you have to give it in a program when it reaches to lower minima the learning process stop the updated weight if you didn't if if it, it if it miss, misses this uh, particular area then again it start increase so to achieve this exact point in a proper time the learning rate is going to help you a lot right we'll see how the learning rate is going to help us so when your learning rate is too slow you can able to achieve this target point when your learning rate is too fast clear when your learning rate is too fast it starts here again it jumps it misses the correct minimum error point again it start increasing like this clear so always learning slow is best for artificial neural network right so uh, just kindly observe this uh, graph for one minute so this is the learning rate step and this is how the regression line exactly fitting with the data set so this is our gradient descent this is the learning rate how weight comes here and finally how it reaches here when we have slowed down our learning rate okay obviously it reaches the lowest minimum when it reaches the lowest minimum exactly is fitting with our data so when it was higher in this position this regression line comes here see from here to here there is a sudden abrupt change after that you can easily get our learning rate in very less number slowly when it comes here what we are doing we are improving it step by step clear so uh, the next important term in uh, artificial neural network is epoch batch size and iteration okay so first you have to understand what is on epoch batch size and iteration okay so one epoch is when the entire data set is passed forward as well as backward 
through the neural network only once. So I told for neural network, we have forward and backward process. So when one entire network has finished one forward and one backward, and we can say that this is a one epoch. Okay, so based on this epoch only, we can improve our model performance. For example, in first case, you are running for uh, 20 epochs, you are getting 80 percentage accuracy. Clear? So if you want to check for when you, if, again, you are altering. So epoch is nothing but it going for forward and checks with the actual value, or it alters the weight. So these process is going to improve so that you can check with by improving to the 40 epoch. So again, these are the playable parameters that you can play for your work. So what is batch size? The total number of training example present in a single batch. So for example, if you have 2000 image, right, you can make it as 500 for one batch. Right. So iteration is how many batch we need. So if it is input uh, images, uh, original data set is 2000. Okay. Batch size is one, batch size is 500. Clear 500. Then we need, okay. Then we need four iterations to complete this 2000. Okay, so we have to define each thing in our process. Okay, so for example, to complete one above, batch size is four, 500, operation is four. Clear? So any doubt so far? So this is how the neural network works. So I will start with the CNN. I will give some little intro, right? So what is the purpose of uh, convolutional neural network? Why they have named the convolutional neural network and how this convolutional neural network differs from artificial neural network. Already we have artificial, artificial neural network that works enough. Then why we have to improve our algorithm? What is the exact purpose of CNN? college <laughs> So, is nothing but already uh, we have used this convolutional term in mathematical signals and processing in many domains. So, convolutional is nothing but it's going to convolute. It's going to check with all the values we used to represent with the ostrich symbol. Correct? So, up to this, we're going to use convolutional process. After the convolutional output of this convolutional, it will be given to the neural network. So here you can see up to this, that is the convolutional process. Clear? So output of the convolutional process is given to the dense layer or fully connected layer, nothing but the neural network. Clear? So we have various architecture diagram that represents how the convolutional neural network works. Up to this, that is convolutional, and this is neural network. So the thing is, up to this, this is a max calculation. You can say it in this way. Up to this, this is a max calculation. Here, the actual brain process takes. Clear? So these are the various uh, architecture diagram which represents the different uh, thing, like VCG16, then AlexaNet, and various things. But you have to understand what is how each layer works what is the purpose of first layer what is the purpose of max pooling layer what is the purpose of striding so you have you have to understand each and every term to build your own network for your problem statement 
clear? So let me tell, tell you the final output of, let me show you the final output of uh, CNN. Because again, it nearly takes one hour to explain all the thing. But I will show you the final output. So after the convolutional process, this is the future of the skin, right? So exactly, you can see futures alone got extracted. See, so this is the output of layer 40 and filter 256, right? So here you can see how one has learned the futures. Layer is 40 and filter is 286. And this is a chain. You can see for this layer, we have good features, but um, this layer is nothing but uh, more messy. So this is for layer 40 and filter 95. So this is uh, for the layer 40. Both is layer 40, but filter this is 95. For filter 95, it works good, but this is for filter 33. So how we are getting such type of uh, features? Because it stack the kind of all the color image. So far, you know, this is the representation for three, three channel, red channel, green channel, blue channel. So when we are telling this is a 65 layer, then the image is considered how it stacked three images, considered it is stacked by 95 images. So then we are validating only the feature part using the activation function and everything. So here convolutional network also follows the activation layer. It validates whether the particular cell has feature or not. Is it clear? So any doubts so far? Any doubt? have any doubt you can ask me now otherwise we'll wind up this session madam shall we conclude yeah yes sir we conclude the session so. Okay, thank you so much for your valuable session. Uh, we learned a lot about uh, machine learning technique uh, from your uh, skill. So I am extremely thankful uh, uh, on behalf of uh, Sri Shairam Institute of Technology for giving this great lecture. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. The participant, you will get the certificate within one day. You will get the process, process uh, based on your attendance percentage. We will send you the uh, certificate, uh, those who are having uh, over 60% of attendance during all session. So you will wait for uh, one week, after that you, you may ask your uh, uh, queries if you are not getting the certificate to the concerned persons. Thank you, thank you participant and thank you research person for this wonderful session. Thank you.